Hi, welcome along to another video. Links to the articles are in the information section. In a bit, we're going to get into a um, Reader's Digest book called Extreme Weather in the Drought section. But first, we'll go through some articles, starting with the National. United Arab Emirates is harnessing the power of tech to move forward. How countries choose to advance into the present uncertainty will define their societies for generations. In this article, when talking about the advancements, all of this is made possible by forward-looking solutions like vertical farming, cloud seeding, research in agricultural genetics and hydroponics. And also in the national, UAE carries out 219 cloud seeding operations in the first six months of the year. A total of 4,841 flares and 419 ground generator flares were used during the flights. In the picture, an aircraft fitted for cloud seeding operations in the UAE, courtesy of the National Centre for Meteorology. In golf business, same story, UAE conducted 219 cloud seeding operations in H1 2020. It's also a nice picture there to accompany the story. Over on eBay, this book's no longer available, probably because it was $143. Weather modification by cloud seeding by Arnett S. Dennis won't be buying that one. Indonesia, Batam News, utilizing weather modification technology in Dran Kang Gai. Overcoming the threat of drought in Batam, the Batam Business Agency, in collaboration with the Technology Assessment and Application Agency, is utilizing weather modification technology. TMC. This technology began in June the 11th, 2020, the application of TMC in Batam is deliberately carried out in the rainy season because it depends on the potential of the clouds to ensure the successful application of the technology. The process of implementing TMC in Batam uses flare seedlings because it is believed to be suitable with the topography of Batam City. So TMC that was definitely not an acronym of weather modification technology because that would be WMT. So what is TMC? It's Taurus Molecular Cloud. If you haven't seen the video of that, it's on YouTube and other platforms. It's also on my channel. Search for TMC 65 or Taurus Molecular Cloud 65. And you'll see it's a ground-based generator. So this article mentions TMC quite a lot, Taurus Molecular Cloud, and also Flare Seedlings, which suggests cloud seeding. So it sounds like there's a little bit of confusion or deliberate confusion about how to be terming these technologies. Could just be journalistic error, fair enough. The American Meteorological Society Research article 6th of July 2020, an assessment of winter orographic precipitation and cloud seeding potential in Wyoming. And then from October 1966, results of 10 years of cloud seeding in Santa Clara County, California. In the South Plata Sentinel, Colorado, if I remember rightly, the right amount of rain. And this is written by someone who grew up on a farm. In the 1960s, I recall that they were doing cloud seeding in our area. It was meant to bring adequate moisture to our territory. When promising rain clouds started gathering, we often heard a plane fly over our property. I remember mum saying, in a disgusted tone, when they seed the clouds, the clouds disappear and all it does is get windy. After a while, I think they quit cloud seeding because it made matters worse rather than better. So that is literally straight from the horse's mouth. 1960s. Over to Russia. News of cloud seeding is taking place to bring rain in Siberia to deal with wildfires. I looked for this info. Came up with a Ruptley video. Russia. Authorities start cloud seeding to combat ravaging forest fires in Siberia. But that one's from August 1st, 2019. So the more recent one from MSN News 18, Russia seeding clouds to bring rain to contain devastating wildfires in Siberia. Russian firefighters have been seeding clouds, authorities said on Friday. Firefighters were using planes to fire chemicals into the clouds. UK's Daily Mail, 10th of July 2020, Russia is seeding rain clouds in Siberia. 
to fight wildfires that have been burning across the country for weeks. Back over to America, Grand Forks Herald in the education section after more than 20 years, University of North Dakota's Atmospheric Sciences Department has a change in leadership. The person that's retiring was instrumental in establishing one of the longest running internships in the college with Fargo-based Weather Modification Incorporated, according to the Dean of the School. There's some history for you. Over to India then and the AAAS website. Geoengineering's benefits limited for apple crops in India. This is from Rutgers University. Geoengineering spraying sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere to combat global warming would only temporarily and partially benefit apple production in northern India, according to a Rutgers co-authored study. But abruptly ending geoengineering might lead to total crop failure faster than if geoengineering were not done according to the study, believed to be the first of its kind in the journal Climatic Change. Okay, from 2006, Reader's Digest book in the series Nature's Mighty Powers, Extreme Weather. I'm going to go to the chapter on drought, page 114, a little bit from there, and page 115. So just to read this bit to you, Breaking Droughts, People have tried all manner of measures to break drought. It was once believed that cannon fire caused rain, and in 1892, American Robert Dyronforth tried to break a drought in Texas using 175 artillery shells and 1,200 explosive charges. They had no effect. So if we look for Robert Dyronforth on Find a Grave, we find Robert George Rainmaker Dyronforth. Born in 1844, died in 1910. From the Encyclopedia of the Great Plains, the earliest attempts involved the concussion method. In 1890, Congress appropriated funds to put this theory into practice. The task was given to General Robert St. George Dyronforth. Experimentation began on the Sea Ranch in Andrews County, Texas in 1891 and continued at San Antonio, Texas in 1892. No rainfall occurred. General Dyronforth was dubbed General Dry Henceforth, and the remaining funds appropriated for rainmaking experiments reverted to the Department of Treasury. So sticking with this little bit of information from, uh, from the Encyclopedia of Great Plains, the public did not give up on rainmaking. Frank Melbourne of Australia the rain wizard, who claimed to possess a secret formula to produce rain, launched a successful career in Goodland, Kansas in 1891. Although Melbourne guarded his techniques, other rain-making companies soon claimed knowledge of his method. By 1892, the Goodland Artificial Rain Company and the Swisher Rain Company competed for business in South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Colorado, Utah, and California. By 1893, five rainmaking companies hailed from Kansas. I don't know if that pun is intended or not. It doesn't say pun intended or pun not intended. So um, by 1893, five rainmaking companies hailed from Kansas, all claiming use of Melbourne's method. Even then, deltas were still in abundance across the Great Plains. Eventually, fraudulent practices, disillusioned farmers, and rainmaking companies lost support. So, before we drop this bit of uh, this article and get back to the Reader's Digest book, another piece of information: the cereal manufacturer C. W. Post of Texas maintained belief in the concussion method from 1911 to 1914. Post executed rain battles near Post City, Texas, detonating dynamite along the Cap Rock Escarpment. Inspired by an occasional rainfall, Post optimistically predicted that rainmaking would one day replace irrigation. So, some nice hundred year old information for you. Taking a quick look at Frank Melbourne of Australia, the rain wizard, we can see from the History of Nebraska website. Melbourne the Rainmaker. Frank Melbourne was one of our best known 
of a small group of rainmakers active in the Great Plains during the early 1890s. A native of Australia, he came west from Ohio in 1891 with his brother Melbourne, also known as the Rain King, the Rain Wizard, and later as the Rain Fakir, worked in Nebraska, Kansas and Colorado. He had his supporters, but many were sceptical of his methods. So to continue with the Reader's Digest piece, another American, Charles Hatfield. So let's have a quick look at him then. From the city of San Diego, Digital Archives. Photograph from 1916, Rainmaker Charles Hatfield. They called Charles Hatfield the greatest rainmaker of modern times. The scene of his, his most spectacular achievement was in San Diego. He approached the city council in December 1915 with an offer for $10,000. He would fill the reservoir at Morena Dam. If no rain fell, he would not be paid. He started January the 1st, 1916. By January the 5th, there was rain at the reservoir. By January the 10th, five days later, heavy rain fell. Then a 10-day downpour began. Rivers overflowed. Lower Otte Dam broke, sending a 40-foot-high wall of water 12 miles to the sea, demolishing everything before it. If we go to the Reader's Digest book about Charles Hatfield, after many failures, Hatfield finally claimed to have broken a drought in San Diego in 1916. Unfortunately, so much rain fell that a local dam burst, destroying houses and bridges and killing 20 people. So the other, the digital archives from the government website doesn't quite mention the killing of 20 people, but there you go, does mention about the dam being burst, etc. The survivors of the disaster tried to sue Hatfield, but the courts ruled that the rains were an act of nature and not the work of the defendant. Handy. The rest of the piece talks a bit about the technology of cloud seeding, finishes up with and even if rain can be made to fall, is that rain being stolen from another area which could be left with an even worse drought? Makes sense. Taking a close-up look um, at the picture, generally talks about silver iodide cloud seeding, does mention in the late 1960s during the Vietnam War, US forces launched a secret research program called Operation Popeye to seed rain clouds with silver iodide. They hoped to be able to use the technology to flood enemy supply routes. Zooming in on the picture just to give you um, a close-up of that flare that's burning. Burning powder, a cloud seeding plane in operation over North Dakota. Aircraft like this are often used to burn silver iodide powder above clouds. One gram of silver iodide can supply as many as 10 trillion artificial ice crystals. Have a think about that. So there's a bit of a history lesson, some more and some recent news for you. Thanks very much for listening, watching, subscribing. Take care. See you next time.